Yay, Whitney, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Welcome, welcome, and hello from your beautiful bathroom. <laughs> you know you're an entrepreneur when you're seeking the one quiet place in your home, which is the bathroom. Yes, I love that so much. We were just saying how relatable, real, authentic it is, and I am all for it. <laughs> it's so great. You know, these are the things you do. I literally just moved into this new home from our like big, beautiful, like completely done house. And this one's like a fixer upper and I don't have office doors yet. And I got a little bit of a yapper dog. So we are here in this bathroom and it is going to be nice and quiet. And we're making it work. I love it. I think it's so great. Okay. Before we dive into today's amazing episode, first of all, thank you so much for joining. I'm so glad you are here. Take a sec, introduce yourself and what it is that you do. Mm, I'm so thrilled to be here. My name is Whitney. For those of you that don't know me, I work with women who run businesses online, right? Um, and basically what it all boils down to is that I spent years working with all of these small business owners to help them grow their businesses online. And there was this one core issue that kept popping up for them over and over and over again. And that was this lack of confidence, right? And so a, the crux of a lot of my work has been helping women step into that place of confidence where they feel so on fire for their work and they know that they bring great value and they're able to position themselves as the kind of person that somebody else would trust to hire, right? So it's this magical experience where we get to build your confidence and also strategize and grow your business at the same time. Mm, love it so much. I think this is not talked about enough. And when it is talked about, I feel like it gets glazed over because women or, you know, women and men alike, but really women specifically, um, look at it as kind of cheesy and cliche. And they're like, I don't have a problem with confidence or, you know, I'm so rooted in what I have to do. And then there's moments that happen where they launch something new or they're in the throes of creating a new offer or whatever it is. And all of a sudden, without warning, imposter syndrome sets in, their confidence is totally shaken. Okay, so let's get into this core issue. I mean, where is it really coming from? Where is it like coming out of the shadows and why don't we ever see it coming? Mm, it comes from so many different places and that's why we don't see it coming, right? Because it could be any experience that really triggers you and makes you question your ability. And fundamentally, confidence is just the, the trust that you have in yourself that you're going to figure it out. And mm. anytime something else in the environment makes you question that, that, that hinders your confidence, right? So it could be things like imposter syndrome. Who do I think I am? No one's going to take me seriously. It could be things like, wow, I'm really out of my depth here. I'm doing something I've never done before. So I'm overwhelmed or I'm scared. Or it could be things like, um, you know, a defeated attitude of saying, why in the world would they pick me and not seeing your own personal value? And all of these things can come uh, up for us as we're doing things that increase our exposure to fear, right? So the reason we can't see it coming, Mandy, is because it is almost like a ninja assassin that wears many faces. So we don't really know <laughs> when it's going to come at us and get us. We're just like, oh God, it's here. And I didn't expect it to come up this way. And now I'm really uncomfortable and I have to face it because if I don't face it, I don't get where I want to go. Mm, that's a really interesting self-awareness that you just had of, um, sometimes a lot of us don't even have that kind of, um, awareness of if I don't address this now, it's going to pop up even uglier, bigger, badder, more ninja, like crazy moves in the future. And that almost takes a self-awareness to know I need to address this before it gets bigger. How do we even get to that, that self-awareness? Is it really, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that it, it, takes a little bit of that uh, mindset work beforehand. Well, you might have noticed this in working with lots of entrepreneurs too, but for me personally, uh, the one thing that never goes away as part of our task list as entrepreneurs is mindset work. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. as we get better at what we do, we increase our exposure to things that feel scary. And as we do that, it's new levels, new devils. And we're always coming up against these new things to be afraid of. So for me personally, self-awareness is rooted in the practice of always paying attention to how you feel and how you're behaving. And so if you don't have a regular meditation practice or a journaling practice or something that helps you look critically at how you're acting and what you're thinking, it would be really easy to miss those cues, right? If you're not yeah. sort of triaging that. But I think a really effective entrepreneur, somebody that takes their growth seriously, knows that in order to get where they want to go, the only person they have to best 
is themselves. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. So you're saying that having almost a daily practice of meditation, prayer, journaling, anything that continues to strengthen that self-awareness so that when, as you said, new level devil decides to present himself, we, it's almost like we can see it coming a little bit more every single time. So do you have any favorites that you personally like to do to make yourself attuned to that? Lots. Okay. So for me, the idea of this um, meditation, prayer, whatever you want to do, it's a combination of really building yourself up with affirmation and Mm -hmm. visualization of like what you want for your life, but also reflection. How Mm -hmm. did I handle that? How was I feeling when I did that thing? Whenever I held back from doing something I really wanted to do, what was I feeling in that moment? Right. So being critically reflective. So it's a two-part process. Number one, whether it's prayer or meditation and thinking on the things that you want for your life and painting the picture, like literally in your mind, painting the picture of what that dream outcome looks like. So you're dreaming on it and it's, your eyes are on it every single day. Right. I um, mean, there's so many different resources and ways that you can do that. If you're visual, or if you just are like a mental person, like me, I'm a dreamer, a thinker. So I just kind of want to like sit and be quiet and like dream on what life will look like, <laughs> but some people need to like paint the, put the car they want on a wall. I don't know. So that, that part where you're allowing yourself to dream about what's coming for you, but then also that part where you're getting really honest with yourself and saying, here's how I handled this. And here are the not so cute things I thought today. (laughs) And the not so cute. Are there anything now that we are working on our self-awareness and we're paying attention to our behavior, is there anything that is um, some, something that should flag us like okay, this behavior probably wasn't the best. Mm-hmm. Is there anything like right off the bat that you can say? Cause I can already think of whenever I get really overwhelmed or really anxious and that crazy ninja comes out of nowhere, the imposter syndrome ninja comes out of nowhere. I almost have to like change my environment. I have to like get up from my desk and walk away and go do something completely different. Um, is there any kind of behavior that's like a, okay, that's a red flag. We want to address that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So a few things, number one, the inner critic, right? So the voice, whenever you start to pay attention to the way you talk to yourself, you'll be horrified. Okay. If you're not already doing that, you'll be totally horrified with the way that you talk to yourself. Okay. So when you hear your voice saying things that are rooted in the negative, right? Like why in the world would they ever take you seriously? Or you have no idea what you're doing or why aren't you good at this? When you find yourself mentally thinking those things, that's a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, that's critical issue trigger number one. And the more that you start to recognize how you talk to yourself, the more you realize you got a lot of mindset work to do. So when that happens, I want you to reroute that statement with something a little more loving, right? So if let's say you are doing something that feels hard and you don't know what you're doing and your mind says to you, God, what were you thinking? You're never going to get this Mm -hmm. instead say, gosh, you are really stretching yourself right now. I'm so proud of you for trying so hard. Same thing. We don't know what we're doing, but at least we're being nice to ourselves about it. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Repositioning the way we talk about it. The other thing that I think you need to be mindful of is not just the way you talk to yourself, but the way that you're self-sabotaging in your behaviors. So let's say, for example, you gave a really good example about how, when you have imposter syndrome, you have to get up and leave the environment and go somewhere different in order to kind of like shake the jitters. I don't actually think that's a bad thing. When I think Mm -hmm. it's bad is if you say, Ugh, not right now. And then you just put it off till tomorrow and you put it off to tomorrow and you put it off into tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I like right? that. So that whole, like I'll get to it. The Scarlet O'Hara. Oh, tomorrow is another day, but except tomorrow. You've never <laughs> actually made it. Yeah. Don't pull a Scarlet y'all. We don't want you pulling Scarlet's here. <laughs> no, you actually okay. have to do the thing. Yeah. You have to actually do the thing. So many people, and I've seen this so many times of the the work that is going to make the biggest impact is often the work that we avoid like the plague. Just sit down and do it, sister. And then at the end of it, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> Excuse me. There's oft- oftentimes too, I'll have to like get up, go cry for a hot sec because I'm so emotional. I'm an emotionally charged person um, that I have a lot of feelings to try and process. And sometimes I just need to have a go, have a good cry. My husband, of course, sweet husband. He just had no idea when he married me. I mean, he had like some idea, but then there's often times that he's like, I don't know what <laughs> I am supposed to be to, doing. Do you need me to do something about this or? <laughs> oh, it's, it's actually gotten to the point where he's like, 
Now, is this a situation that I can help? Is this a situation that I just need to be physically present sitting next to you and say nothing? Or is this a situation that I need to go to Starbucks and get you a drink? <laughs> My husband and I always will say to each other, fix it or listen, right? And so it's like, you may yes. fix it or you may just listen. Uh, yes. And then that way we know what we expect of one another if somebody comes in unhinged. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. That's great communication right there. I love that so much. So, okay. So doing, doing some kind of prayer meditation, uh, having a journaling prompt, are there any kind of journals? Actually, I'm sure people are wondering, are there any kind of journals or prompts that you love and you subscribe to and recommend to everybody and anybody? So for me, I love the freedom of a blank page, but I am a writer by trade, right? So if you need a little bit more structure, um, I will tell you that Rachel Luna has incredible resources. Her mm -hmm. handle is Girl Confident. She has really great um, sort of journaling prompt exercises that are all rooted in psychology. So that's a really great resource for you if you need some guidance there. Another resource that I think has been critically powerful for me in my mindset practice and strengthening my confidence as a residual benefit of this um, is by doing um, meditation practice that I learned through Emily Fletcher. And if you follow her company, it's called Ziva Meditation. And it's, it feels like an everyday, like an every woman's guide to meditation. It's not foo-foo. It doesn't feel weird. It feels deeply powerful and it feels relevant and it's easy to do. So she's a really great resource if you're looking uh, for someone to help walk you through that process of building your own meditation. Mm, love those resources. Thank I always love tangible items just like that because I know that it speaks to people in different places in their lives. So I'm I've actually never really tried journal prompting or prompts that have what am I trying to say? Journals with prompts. Oh my gosh, I was trying to make it sound cooler than <laughs> it's still cool. journal prompting, prompting journals. Okay, anyways, journals with prompts. Um and I've always just really stuck to um, prayer and meditation, but I will definitely be looking into that for myself. Okay. I want to talk about the magnetize membership of yours. Give us the details. Give us the dish. What is that all about? So I was working with all of these women in one-on-one -on -one capacity and we were making really great strides, but I always had this wait list of people that I could never really like make room for. And I also had this subset of people that I was like, having in, in community, like conversations in community, but they just weren't at this place where they could afford a one-on-one -on -one coach. And I felt like, gosh, this is really a disservice to so many women who are hungry for support and hungry to learn and build those skills, but they're just not at a place where they can afford a one-on-one -on -one coach yet. So I mm -hmm. launched a membership last year uh, called Magnetize, and it's literally for the woman who desires community and coaching and support and some skill building around building her business online, but she's not necessarily ready for some one-on-one -on -one support. And the really cool thing is that this has ended up being such a group hive, like a, a group think uh, experience where so many people are helping and encouraging one another. And it's not just like the Whitney show. There's so much value that's happening in that community that comes from other experts that are building their businesses too. Uh, and we're an incredible community, 450 women strong and growing. Mm. And it's been so incredible to sort of watch what happens whenever you create sort of the infrastructure for people to collaborate with each other and then let them take it away. Right. Mm, I love that so much. That's so exciting. And I love that you've created that option for them as well. Um, my last question actually goes back to the, the confidence work and kind of, uh, recognizing how we talk to each other, what we do, the behavior. Um, so I guess, I guess my question is, <clears throat> as we're, as we're starting to create services and offers and, and products, what is just like the fundamental, very starting base for someone to do confidence work as they're progressing through? Um, what are just some of the absolute basics to be able to feel so much more confident in what we have to offer? Because I remember the very first time that I started offering one-on-one -on -one coaching, I was terrified. I was so terrified, even though I had spent so much time in my topic and in my niche, being almost accountable to a person one-on-one -on -one was terrifying. <laughs> And I feel like I needed you last year, Whitney. Where were you last year for me? I was here doing it, honey. You were um, here just chilling. I was here doing the same thing as you, just trying to figure it all out. Um, there are so many things that you can do. There are so many things that you can do that build confidence as you're moving in the direction of accomplishing your goals, right? One of the things that I think is really critically helpful is having a plan. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a plan and you know, the next right move, you don't have to focus on the big mountain in front of you, which is super overwhelming and causes more fear and a lack of confidence. You can just focus on that next right step. So when there's a plan in place and you know, these are the next moves and they're in order, you just focus on one move at a time. And that makes it so much more manageable for you to mitigate the fear as you are building the thing that you want to build. Now, when it comes to showing up in this place of, um, confidence and authority of saying like, I know that I'm great at what I do and I know I'm worth what I charge. And I think it's such a gift to be able to give that to people, right? That's a whole different posture. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of reinforcement and work. The one thing I will tell you is when you're marketing to it, make sure that your, mar your marketing is always about them and not about you. So it's not the Whitney show. It's not, I did this, I did that. I can help you do X. It's you desire this. You are ready for that. And it's my job to come alongside you and help you accomplish those things. And when you make it about the person you're serving, it hits so different. You can feel good about it because you're not making it about you. You're not peacocking and being ridiculous and trying to act like it's, you know, you're the second coming. You're saying, my role <laughs> here is a role of service. And my job here is to help you do the things that you want to do. It's not about me anymore. And that really will help you when it comes to positioning and really believing what you're doing is of value. Now, I will say time, time in doing the thing that you're doing over and over again, realizing you're not going to die when you take risks and you put yourself in those positions to be like, oh crap, I'm really, I'm out there now, right? When you just spend a little time and give yourself some grace, the next thing you know, months are, months are going to go by and you're going to look back and you're going to say, huh, I'm not nearly as scared as I used to be because you're going to have shown up over and over and over again, doing that thing and proving to yourself I am capable and I am going to survive this fear. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that so much. It actually reminds me of this amazing quote that I've kind of taken with me ever since reading um, the, the book, The Magic of Thinking Big. Um, actually, it's right here by David Schwartz. Thank you, David Schwartz, for um, indirectly sponsoring this. <laughs> he said- You can in send the her a first, check too. I know, you can send me a check for putting this. It's such a great book. In the very beginning, it talks exactly about overcoming fear and that um, prolonging an action um, only feeds it only when you take action does it cure the fear mm -hmm. so I mean we think about you know roller coasters or you know doing something we've never done before and there is that little bit of fear no matter big how big or small the minute we take action and say okay I'm just gonna do it one two three go the minute you get on the other side of it you're like ah oh, that wasn't so bad. And then just like you said, the more you get in the habit of just moving forward, putting one foot in front of the other, one step at a time, mind you, not like scatterbrained all over the place trying to do a million different things, just one step at a time, one right foot in front of the other. It's crazy how much more confident you are going to feel moving forward because again, new level, new devil, but you've had so much exper experience before that piece of cake. And kind that's of. the thing too, you guys all forget, I think you forget just oh. how much you've accomplished before you got to this place. Like you yeah. act like you're a brand new baby on new legs. You've never walked in your life, <laughs> but you just, all these things that you just did in the previous thing that you did, whether it was launching a different business or a previous career that you had, all of that equips you for the thing you're getting ready to do now. You're not functioning from zero. You're functioning from experience. Amen. Ooh, that. Mm, she just said that. That's real good. I feel like that's like the perfect way to be like, and we're done here. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> bless. And bless you. Goodbye. Okay. So good. Now share with everybody that's listening how they can connect with you and potentially work with you. Maybe even be a part of Magnetize Membership. Absolutely. You can follow me. The magic is always on Instagram. Mandy and I are both lovers of the platform. You can yeah. follow me over at Whitney Abraham on Instagram. And if you want to work together, you can always shoot me a DM and ask me what's going on. If you could, if you tell me what's going on with you, I'll put you in the direction of the, of the exact right fit for you. Um, but regardless, I'd be, I'd be so thrilled to have you on my corner of the internet where I can just get to know you and help support you in whatever way I can. Oh, I love that so much. Thank you so much for joining Whitney. It was such a pleasure chatting with you and getting all kinds of goodness about really building our confidence and doing the dang thing. Mm, it's my joy. Thank you for being such a light and an example for other women growing their businesses too. <laughs>